Bill Merchant, historian and curator here at the D&H Canal Historical Society. Our museum here at 23 Mohunk Road in High Falls will be closed in two years, so we created the Virtual Museum, short three to seven minute segments that will tour you through this museum while we still can. I hope you enjoy. When you come into our museum here at 23 Mohunk Road in High Falls, New York, the first thing you'll see is this map of the route of the D&H Canal the Delaware River to the Hudson River. This route was determined in 1823 when the newly formed D&H Canal Company hired Judge Benjamin Wright of Erie Canal fame <clears throat> to lay out a route for a proposed canal to get their coal from the northeastern anthracite fields of Pennsylvania to New York City. And this is the route that they figured out. Judge Wright was already so sought after as a canal engineer that he didn't actually do the survey himself, but instead hired two other men to do it under his supervision, uh, Mills and Sullivan. And here is the route that they decided to take us on. They laid it all out in river valleys because that was what you want to do back in that time. River valleys, you needed to have a source of water. Indeed, any time the water was higher than the canal, they figured out a way to get it into the canal. The other reason was that somewhere in a river valley, you could go the longest length without needing locks to overcome changes in elevation. The d &H Canal route, as uh, determined by these gentlemen, was 108 miles long and originally had 110 locks. Now, as you see, what you're going to see along here as we look at it, that little snubbing post... There's lock 35 in Pennsylvania. They numbered the locks in Pennsylvania separately from the locks in New York State. Actually, Pennsylvania wasn't even worked on. They started the canal in 1825. They didn't do any work until the final year. They didn't even, didn't even speculate about the route. They were afraid people were going to gouge them. So it follows the Lackawaxon River. The Forks of Dyberry was named Honesdale very quickly for Philip Hone, the very first president of the D&H Company. It followed the Lackawaxon River here down all along through Pennsylvania, took us right to the confluence of the Delaware and the Lackawaxon River. Originally, it crossed on a rope ferry. They had what they called the Delaware Pond, where they put up a dam, and then they had a rope ferry. The, the early boats had a single animal. The animal would climb onto the boat, and you'd pull yourself across. After 1850, in their final enlargement, a series of two aqueducts were built here by John Augustus Roebling. These predated the design of his bridges. I think he might have done one suspension bridge, but he built four suspension aqueducts eventually after 1850. One over the Lackawaxon, one over the Delaware. There's a picture of the Delaware one right there. That particular one you can visit today and you can drive over, ably administered by the National Park Service. And there was one in Cuttabackville, and one right here in High Falls over the, the, the Roundout Creek. In a future Where Is Our Historian feature, I'll take you to that. Probably take you to all of them at some point here. So now it would follow the Delaware River. Amazingly enough, the canal company originally was going to try and just run, the, run the, the Delaware River. If you look at it today, you'd have a hard time trying to think how they would have managed that. But they, in their very first annual report, they, they tell you that they made the decision to actually build the canal. And indeed, you can see those remnants to this day. Here at Port Jervis, Carpenter's Point, but later renamed Port Jervis for John Jervis, one of uh, Benjamin Wright's acolytes that came and was the second chief engineer of the Dean H. Canal Company starting in 1827. It followed the Neversink River all the way up here. Here in Cuttabackville, you had the start of what we call the 17-mile summit level, where all the way from there to just north of Wurtsboro, they had a 17 mile stretch that they didn't need any locks where they could just stay at the same level. They said the water flowed in both directions, towards the Hudson and towards the Delaware. And the outflow on the Cuttabackville end on these locks right here was so severe, most of the locks were just six, six inches wider than the boats, but they had such a hard time getting the boats in from the outflow of the 17 mile summit level that they had to build those locks when they rebuilt them in 1850 and widened them an extra six inches, so they had six inches either side rather than the three that was typical at the other locks. It follows then, here's the Bashakill. There's some wonderful, wonderful remains still on that uh, northwestern edge of the Bashakill Creek that you can visit. Follows the 
Sandberg Creek, never crosses it, but follows along it. Hugging right up against the Shoengum Mountains here, you can't see it from this map. Here in Ellenville, the Roundout Creek joins. Here's a great shot of Ellenville. Some of those buildings are still extant. Might as well show you the seaside supply in Wurtsboro was lost two years ago. We're all heartbroken. The local utility tore it down rather than saving it for history. You know, history, once it's lost, you seldom get it back. Shame on you. So it follows the Roundout Creek. Remember, every one of these is a snubbing post. Boats lock through in five minutes. Can you believe it? Napanock Correctional Facility. All the materials for that particular facility were moved on the D&H Canal after it closed its entire length. Uh, after 1898, it was only open from Wurtsboro to, to round out for a couple of years. They moved in all the materials for what was then a correctional, or excuse me, a reformatory, currently a correctional facility. Boy, that's some double speak, huh? Followed through, following the Roundout Creek. Here is Lock 17. You can see that, what's left of it. That gear house is now actually in our neighbors, and the Lock Tender Shanty is currently in the lawn of our current museum. Followed through, Accord. Accord, known as Port Jackson back in the Canal era. Uh, probably named for Andrew Jackson, uh, the first populist president. Following the Roundout Creek here, here in High Falls. They rerouted after the final enlargement and dropped down to 108 locks. Here's an early 20th century view of people under the rolling aqueduct in High Falls. You can make out to the left that stone aqueduct that was originally built here. They couldn't widen it. They could deepen it, but they couldn't widen it. Brings you all the way up here to round out on the Hudson. And there's a great shot of their offices, no longer extant, up Company Path and Rondout. Rondout was maybe two farms when the, uh, when the D&H Canal came through. It became a huge city, actually bigger than the town of Kingston when they united in 1872 for, uh, for political reasons. <clears throat> All of this, so now they finally get out to the Hudson River. They're still 80 miles from their intended market of New York City. During this time of canal fever in American history, everybody knew what a boon it would be to have your canal come past your house or your city or your state or your town. In fact, this was largely wilderness and all these towns uh, prospered because the canal came through. The town fathers here in Newburgh thought it was so important, they petitioned the D&H Canal Company when it was first announced to actually terminate their canal right there. Unfortunately, the Schoengum Mountains, which ran from you, to the right, all the way down from here, all the way, were just way too big uh, an uh, uh, impediment <clears throat> and too tall. And they didn't have the technology to tunnel it. It finally gets tunneled in 1872, the first railroad goes through it. But this is the route of the d &H Canal. It had an outsized effect on American history because it fueled the Industrial Revolution at a time when we didn't have a lot of wood east of the Appalachians. the d &H Canal Route. Thank you so much for joining us in our virtual tour. New episodes will be put up every week. Hope you enjoy.